places, friends, places, years and moments are forgotten. Laughs, fears, songs, tears. Memories are made of this. I remember a time when the surrender Italian Navy anchored in Malta Hub. For Italy get out for good from the war that few had really wanted. The war, the mistake. One mistake, Benito Mussolini was being rescued by his Nazi friends from pro-allied hands. But wherever il duce flew, he could not escape destiny. Death from Italian patriots. In Rome, as news became known of Marshal Badoglio's armistice, fascist emblems crashed to the ground. But in her rejoicing, Rome little realized just how long it was to be before she was to be truly out of the war. Like all roads, the Via Appia leads to Rome. On its stones have marched many an army, many a conqueror. This is the story of the last march that way, the last march on Rome. Last halt on the Via Appia before Rome is Naples. See Naples and die. In 1943, through poor shattered Naples, the Allied armies roll forward towards Rome. For many Neapolitans, life has seldom been prosperous. But in 1943, while the port choked with hulks of destroyed ships, the city a death trap of Nazi time bombs spreading delayed unexpected death, a city in dire straits without power, without food, without water. From the thin trickles at the public fountains, thousands try to fill a can, a bottle, a cup. Everywhere contamination, disease. Truly, see Naples and die. The Allied commanders do what they can, but for them, the war must come first. It is their duty. Having seen for himself in Naples, General Mark Clark takes off in his personal plane from the city seafront for the battlefield. But in a country under total war, is the battlefield not everywhere? the farmer, the peasant, business as usual, even under the muzzles of the guns, such as the Italian's faith in the soil, in the inevitability of the true things of life. War, crawling like some monstrous crab, through village by village. Now it reaches where Enrico lived, now it crawls on to Roberto's home. Bullets from the window, bombs from the roofs, shells over the house of God. Such was the path to Rome in 1943, stone by stone.
between the Allies and Rome, the Nazis. In action or idle in the prison cages, men who fought because fighting had now become routine, even though it held small chance of ultimate victory. At this time, the only ones among the Allies to see Rome were the airmen. The eternal city, almost unreal, like a child's toy. Yet for an Italian, real enough to make us weep. Only a glimpse, for the airmen had business in the hills between. But the Allies weren't the only ones to drop bombs. This was Bari, after a sudden German raid. The enemy might be on the defensive, but that didn't stop him from hitting back hard. But whoever struck the blow, always it was Italy that was hit. And for so many, terrible hardship. Because for centuries in our country, poverty has been for many a close neighbor. And who was Mussolini to people who have always ground their own corn and baked their own bread? Fascism, war, the same as the little black pest that eat the grapes. But when you catch a little black pest, that eats the grapes, what do you do with him? Such a little black pest was Antonio Finamore, a local fascist party boss, brought to justice before a British military court. Now Antonio faces the accusations of his fellow villagers, an 82-year-old farmer who has suffered extortions from Antonio, a mother of three, starved by Antonio for three days, And then what happened to Antonio? Do you care? I don't. What is important is what happens now to Italy. In Naples, Count Sforza advises the people to rid themselves of the monarchy. Some agree. Others? In Italy now, politics are a total war in themselves. But at least in Naples, the port is open and working again. Only just, yet working. Most things that come in must be for war, but at least now there is some flour. Now new long and desperate queues, new agonies for a loaf. How long must Naples continue to be a battlefield? Then, like the last throw, a fresh calamity. Above Naples hangs an evil curtain of smoke. A fire to be extinguished? Not a fire. No human aid can help these victims, for their enemy is Vesuvius. An eruption like this occurs but once in ten years. But for Callus Vesuvius, when the moment comes, it is the moment. Even as Allied soldiers visit ruined Pompeii that the volcano once struck down, Vesuvius moves again to destroy and obliterate. Why do people live so close to Vesuvius? So near to creeping death? Because they have always done so? Because they never lose faith? Or is it because the wine from the grapes of these slopes is unusually good? But don't they realize that men call that wine 
Lacrima Christi, the tears of God. Devastation by nature, or by man. What difference does it make? On the path to Rome is Cassino, a little town at the foot of a great wall of mountain. There, German resistance hardens, and Cassino becomes a word for stubbornness and frustration. There, for the time being, the path to Rome is effectively closed. What does a soldier do in the long pauses between fighting? He writes home. Yet sometimes, a breath of home comes even to the battlefield itself. In a little Italian town, a concert staged by Oh, what do they call it? Um, Ensa. And for those who cannot get in, an unexpected performance by Tommy Trinder. You can't get in! <laughs> <laughs> you unlucky people! <laughs> well, anyway, the best thing we can do is to walk out in the open air. <laughs> really, I should be here in battle dress. You know, when I left England to come and work for Ensa, they said, uh, you'll have to wear a battle dress. I said, well, what's the idea? I mean, after all, I, I'm an actor, not a soldier. So he said, well, you'll have to wear a battle dress because if you get captured by the Germans, they'll shoot you. I said, if the Germans capture me, they're entitled to shoot me. <laughs> next, next thing, they, uh, they put me on an aeroplane. Yeah, they put me on an aeroplane, flew me all the way out to Algiers. I eventually arrived at the aerodrome. Is that my voice or a brake squeaking? <laughs> Good afternoon, rich people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. First Americans I've seen not riding in a jeep. <laughs> oh, they've all got their own personal jeeps. <laughs> yeah. Same as this one they've given me. Gave it to me instead of a gas mask. <laughs> I, you know, I, I feel this afternoon like a screen lover. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I once made a picture for MGM. You know, the beginning of an MGM film where Leo the Lion comes out and goes, <laughs> Came out the beginning of my picture, but he didn't roar. <laughs> Just went... Nineteen forty-four to break the deadlock, a landing. In the half-light of early morning, many machines go ashore at Antio, a big jump nearer to Rome, and another front to strain the enemy's already hard-pressed forces. At Cassino, the enemy is the cork in the bottleneck formed by sea and mountain. There, the Allies must continue their battering, for there is the German main strength. But with their command of the seas, the British and Americans have the power to jump, to sail up the coast and bypass the neck of the bottom. From Naples, fighting men board the landing craft that will carry them to the new strip of friendly soil, Juan at Antio. There, the warships exchange shots with German batteries, well dug in around the new beachhead. But the light strength grows hour by hour. As more and more men, guns and tanks come ashore. Between the wind drives of Anzio e Cassino, the Allied command hopes to crack the nut of Nazi resistance. Already a steady stream of prisoners flows back to the landing craft that will take them away. Antio promises well. Meanwhile, Cassino, 
from his strong points in the hills, the enemy looks down at the Allied soldiers fighting up from the plain. Between sides, a jungle of broken walls and smashed home that was once casino. A nightmare to the attacker. A perfect battlefield for the defender. Each crumpled wall, a natural barricade. Casino is costly indeed. High above the town is a famous and beautiful monastery. This, the Allies believe, is now a Nazi fortress. Though hating to destroy such a building, they fire off leaflets in their shells, warning the enemy that unless he retires, the monastery will be destroyed. The enemy does not reply. And so, well, watch for yourself. Was the monastery of Cassino a German stronghold? Well, what does it matter now? And so men destroy that which other men labored with love to build for the glory of God and the benefit of all men. And what is happening at Anzio now, so few miles from Rome? Though the Allies are now assuring strength, because their first boldness was not followed quickly up, the enemy had had time to organize his resistance, no matter how the Allied guns hammer, from Anzio or roads to Rome are effectively cut. And then, of course, the rain comes. You didn't know it can rain in Italy. And how, when it does, the dust turns to a sea of mud? Oh, yes. That's the time when you begin to wonder who called our land Sunny Italy. That's the time when the narrow defiles from the hills fill the rivers with flood water until the rivers themselves can hold no more. Then in those rivers, the water takes on a power and a force that threatens every bridge. As the enemy left no bridges, the only ones are the temporary structures thrown over by the army. And being hastily built, often they cannot withstand such terrible strain. attack by nature on land, an attack too on the sea. A tank landing craft is driven ashore by the storm and wrecked on the rocks. Its cargo, German prisoners of war. British and American soldiers struggle to get the helpless ashore. Under such a pounding by the sea, the ship begins to break in half. Six Germans and two Americans are swept away by the waves. face of the common enemy, friend and foe, battled together. But when at last the ship found us, 14 men had died. But with the passing of the rain, the war makes progress. At long last, the enemy has been driven from Casino. Up those terrible slopes, the Allied troops wind their way to the top. Up there, 
the monastery is just now a heap of stones and splintered beams. So much for the glory of God. Down their slopes into the prison cages come those who have resisted successfully for so long. Why do they fight so hard? And for what? Now at last, under the shield of a lie they are part, the armies can move forward towards Rome. And it isn't long before, on the flat lands near the coast, they meet men wearing the same uniforms as themselves. There the two armies, one from Cassino, the other from Antio, meet up. There are congratulations, and then together they move on Rome. The Allied planes dive on to the retreating foe, and even in all its long history, the Viafia has never known such carnage. Along the paths over the wooded hills, along the valleys, nowhere is the advance held up for long. A hard battering which in the end superior strength must tell. And then, suddenly, the firing dies. The plane ahead is empty of the enemy. And then, among the silent guns, those who watch have one word on their lips. Rome. you would have thought that those who now entered Rome had never at any time been enemies. For the Romans, the allied entry into their city had all the thrill of the true liberation. Yes, with the end of the Nazi domination of Rome, her citizens have much to give thanks for. And that day, thousands march on St. Peter's. But Rome is not all Italy, and the Nazis are still in Italy. And so above the vines, there still hangs the evil fog of war. Amid the farms and the orchards, the flame throwers burn their slow, terrible way to the northern plains. See Italy, and die. And that which the flamethrowers cannot burn out must be burnt out by Italians themselves. In Rome, every organization, every building that held a fascist becomes a target for the vengeful mob. And even when the first rage is spent, fashion keeps its grip. In painful trial after painful trial, the guilty undergo the justice of the people of those they have betrayed. And though we are at heart a fair people, such is our emotion, but often, too often, it's mob justice that completes their trials. No, it's not a pretty scene. 
but then war is not pretty. But now at last, Italy has the freedom in which to recover. Freedom in which to rebuild her cities. Freedom in which to make her fields fertile once again. A good people. A hard-working people. With faith in the soil. In God. And their own skills. And however long it takes, even the worst of mistakes, a good people can put right.